paper magic will survive like the heat death of the universe and will... <laughs> oh, it's a smuggler's copter. Would you like to crew this? And then it crashes because they don't understand arithmetic. All your cards belong to me. Two minutes into Mason him in the eyeballs, I switched to pepper spray. He's like, yeah, it's downright refreshing. And went back to the race. Magic is dying. I'm done. <laughs> Selling everything. I might be a hoarder. And yes. I don't have the crayons or glue to explain this to you right now. <laughs> Were you going to die twice? Oil Just... would be worthless before magic cards would. Well, okay, Dr. Man. That's Mr. <laughs> Dr. Professor Jason. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Brainstorm Brewery. Let me walk you through a story. My co-host Jason and DJ are here. Once upon a time, there was uh, a website, and um, what did this website do? It got really big and really popular, and then what happened? It got less big and less popular, and then it got bought by TCG Player, and it's a sad story, I guess. Is Anyways, it brainstormbrewery.com? Channel Fireball has been acquired by TCG Player. I was trying to do a what does it all mean meme here if anybody uh, follows the NBA. But uh, this is big news. This is big, big, big news. Channel Fireball has been acquired by TCG Player um, along with Channel Fireball. And this is what maybe people don't realize. They have a system called a piece of software called Binder POS. Which is a POS means point of sale. It means piece uh, of. <laughs> yeah, it is a um, this is one of those pieces of of software that's going to help TCG player accomplish their goal of being the end to end from our store to your storefront um, type provider, you know, and they, they, that's an industry that has crystal commerce in it, among others. So. Um, that, that is also a big part of this deal is that the binder POS, uh, piece of the company is getting picked up by TCG player along with, as we understand, you know, everything else, the content arm, the event arm, obviously this will impact me as I have been working a lot of events for channel fireball over the past few years. So this is a big deal. This is big news in the industry and it comes not too long after Channel Fireball launched their own marketplace. Remember that? It was roughly 10 months because I think I think I got the invite in May. May of 2021 Oof. is when I like applied. Oof. They uh, they launched that the same way the Lusitania was launched. <laughs> and then I think they went live in September. So Jason, yeah, I haven't about... seen I haven't seen that show. Is that from like the 80s but, or what? I can't tell if you're kidding, Corbin. I know, right? It's that Oklahoma education. You're like, <laughs> you can't make that joke because it's like, was he just never taught right? What What was the reason for World War II? God. God wanted American to kill some Germans. We did it. Jesus broke a dinosaur's neck and the dinosaur's family got mad. <laughs> And Chris Pratt had to go rescue it. <laughs> <laughs> that probably is the plot of Tomorrow War, because right? I've seen I've seen Tomorrow. I'm not going to watch Tomorrow War, so I've seen it. it was. Fun. I mean, if you, Corbin, if you've seen Lusitania, you have to have seen Tomorrow War. They're basically sequels. I have yeah. not seen Lusitania, so I'm not familiar with that. Can one. you follow Tomorrow War if you haven't seen Lusitania? The I don't think that they're related. I don't have Paramount Plus, so I, I haven't seen Lusitania. <laughs> uh moving on uh yeah anyway so it's funny because we we spent a lot of time on this podcast talking about the channel fireball marketplace launch and how this was a big deal as mm -hmm. a competitor to TCG channel player. fireball broke my heart i was so excited for somebody to have a competitor to tcg player they tried just... they gave it a big swing like they weren't the first to try and take on tcg player in this industry um but they were the biggest to try to Listen, and um, it if went you the sponsor way this pod, went. if you sponsor this podcast, you probably shouldn't stop. <laughs> What's your view? Who sponsored this podcast and stop Squatty Potty? Have you heard about them lately? Not lately. No, not in lately. You know why? Because we're not saying Squatty Potty on this podcast, except the two times I just did. All right. Mm -hmm. Channel Fireball dropped us as a sponsor, dropped Spice 8 Rack as well. Look what happened to them. I'm just saying, go to OriginalMagicArt.com and use our promo code. Dot store. Dot store. Use our promo code because Original Magic Art right now is getting real nervous. They're like, does Brainstorm Brewery still consider us a sponsor? I don't know. 
How's our affiliate traffic doing? Go to <laughs> go to Original Magic Art. I swear, there's they still we still have a, a thing that we still have a code there. Use the code, right? What's no? We've let's got not codes let anything. Codes, I like OMA. Sure. I don't want anything bad to happen to them. I'm 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 saying for their sake, please mm. continue mm. to make mm. them feel like a sponsor. Same with Coalesce, by the way. Oh Coalesce well, the, yeah. Coalesce. We would like we would like all of these companies to still exist. So uh, I'd like yeah. to hold up. We I mean the to, just to follow up on Jason's point. Gathering Magic also sponsored this podcast, and so look what happened. Go to gatheringmagic.com right now. It doesn't Dead exist. And gone. It redirects to a different website who may be on borrowed time. I don't know. Cool Rainstar stuff. Rainstar Brewery is like the ring of podcasts. Is that? Is yeah. That Seven the ring years. Of <laughs> yeah. Seven years you were going to go out of business if you wrong us. At zero to seven. It's it's a range. So Seven's your max. Seven's your, your, your max lifespan, right? I mean... I guess. I mean, it's seven years rules. is a long time for any sort of website, especially one predicated on a, a, a children's card game. So, well, look, on that note, um, I'm going to peel this back a little bit and talk about it on this level. Channel Fireball, TCG Player, you go back even further with other magic websites that have done well. They view themselves as technology companies first. TCG Player is huge on being a tech company. Um, they are part of that field, not, you know, the legacy tabletop field. Uh, and Channel Fireball had an esports team. They, they, TCG Player looked at sponsoring um, a Magic team back when that was a thing. Uh, Channel Fireball went hard on an esports team. They had great brand recognition with it. This is all over the last, you know, couple years. Um, and we see that, you know, look, I don't know if it went, I, it's hard to say because this might be TCG player might have just come in and, and thrown so much money at Channel Fireball, they couldn't say no. But I think it's probably more likely that the contraction of Channel Fireball over the past five years is reflective of not just the larger magic industry, um, but the larger esports ish industry as well, if you want to look at it that way. I mean, we've just seen continued pullback of investment across the entire esports field. Over the past few years, you know, big layoffs at esports organizations, big layoffs at media corporations covering um, esports. It's been kind of a bloodbath, especially with the games industry in general. You know, we've seen yep. layoffs um, across a range of, of companies. So yeah, it turns out the pandemic uh, didn't really help. Nobody really played competitive magic for a couple of years and the competitive I'd... magic company uh, suffered. Who could have seen it coming? I don't think their affiliation with esports is that's a very very loose string to pull i think well what i'm saying like is their downfall yeah what i'm saying is this the entire gaming industry is facing pressures um that it wasn't because i know for a fact that you know channel fireball is one of those companies that wanted to push ahead into the esports field secure funding sponsorships and I'm not saying that the, them being acquired by TCG players are related to that. What I'm saying is when I see Channel Fireball get acquired, I'm seeing just another domino across the whole industry that we work in. I'm just another I mean, gaming Fireball related company struggle. Shields crypto and fake Black Lotus Ponzi schemes. Like that that I don't know, man. Like Yeah. I, think I mean Fireball I think that those things are own... also reflective of uh you know, their struggles within the industry, right? I mean, look, the whole industry has been struggling. We can't we can't sit here and talk about I, it, is it and like, not have the conversation is we, that is it struggling because like we just keep talking about how Wizards is making record profits and like how the well, game is constantly those, growing. Those like, are different things, right? Like the the content creator market, for instance, has been way, way, way worse over the past eighteen months as it was before that. And that obviously you saw Channel Fireball move their content to a paywall model. Um, you know, that you've seen magic channels, pull their YouTube, um, channels, you know, make them go to funk, not do it anymore. We've just seen a pullback across magic in terms of some of these outlays as a result of, of the, well, it, it shifts things. to different, it shifts to different people. Like Ristics Studies is doing yeah. incre incredibly well, like individualistic, like 
companies and channels mm-hmm. and like small businesses are like thriving. Like, yeah, you can't. It's just you can't be moves. paywalling articles when people are putting out high quality YouTube videos for free. Yep. And like for me, I would I would a thousand percent rather read an article than watch a video because like if there's a deck list, it's the worst. You know, yep. but um. I think in, in if you view articles as entertainment, um, it's, you know, I, I think a lot of that has moved to YouTube, which is free if there's a paywall involved. But a lot I of think- it hasn't. So, for instance, TCG play, the Channel Fireball has exceeded on YouTube. TCG Player had yeah. really good YouTube offerings some number of years ago and then pulled the plug entirely on their entire staff there. So TCG Player now acquiring Channel Fireball leaves me with a bunch of questions on the content end. Well, I mean, we watched the the world champion of 2020, Paulo Vito Darmo de Rosa, say, my Patreon isn't making enough money for me to write articles, and I can't find a website because Channel Fireball and Star City aren't paying for these things anymore. Like, it's been rough, and will, I think, continue to be rough, and I'm very interested to see what this means uh, when they make note of the fact that they are acquiring... Uh, Oh, you know, all of Channel Fireball. Because like I said, it, it, there's the events. They're buying it for Binder the POS. Content. That's, they're buying it for Binder POS. That's that's most of like, like 95% of the reason. And they were a little it. they were a little squirrely about uh CFB as a competitor, especially in the flesh and blood space. So this is uh, a way to sleep better at night, also. This is well, know, it certainly it, helps them in in yeah. Um Channel Fireball had lots of connections in that sort of space for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, past they've tense. Re- they had really con- yeah, you know who else the... had connections past tense? Yeah. So. <laughs> well, what's interesting is that TCG Player used to run events. For a while, they were getting into it. They had a TCG Player Invitational Series. Mm-hmm. They had a whole thing. And then they very actively pulled out of that space. So when we look at this deal, I, I'm with DJ. I think that the Binder POS thing is, you know, like I said, they view themselves as a tech company first. They view this as a, a deal to up their technology, you know, portfolio or wherever they would look at it. Um but it doesn't hurt that they now have access to whatever the f- sort of fledgling events industry is left across North America. I, which I is, think they're going to dump that like the commons and commons of a booster pack. Like the That's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Like they, they have I would be very surprised if they tried to like get back into events or hype up those events or like even like try to fight Star City on that front. Like I have. Well, no Channel Fireball is running nationals for. Oh, I'm sorry, running worlds for flesh and blood in the fall. Like that's mm-hmm. a thing on the calendar. So like, <laughs> like it's, it's, that's what, there's just so many questions. Are they going to, are they going to, you know, is this going to be a West coast base of operations? Cause channel fireball is located in Henderson, Nevada, CCG players in Syracuse, New York. There's, we don't know what the, sort of the implementation of this will look like. And that's why I have so many questions regarding events, regarding content creation. What if they um, met in the middle and set up their business in Lake of the Ozarks? Oklahoma. Oh. No. <laughs> it's going to make an Ozark joke, but you don't know shit about and you just stepped on my punchline. Never seen that show either. Well, and now you never will because <laughs> I don't know why actually. This is awkward. Let's, There's a uh, lot. Yeah, let's move back to this. TCG why did we not channel. stop at episode 500? That's what is I'm it wondering. TCG ball, by the way. What? Or is it channel player? Oh, channel fire player. It's ball player. It's TCG. It's it's TCG player. It's just TCG player. It's just like Roco Robotics is just Roco Robotics by TCG player. It's it's just like how Delver Lens is Delver Lens. Now is just TCG player. Like it's just, just like uh, everything they, is um, Apple. So the the very big summation of this is that uh, monopolies are not good for consumers, and like TCG player actively buying up significant shares of the market space. Like the only real competitor TCG player has really is like eBay in terms of like an actual rival. Um, in terms of, like, the actual capital and, like, longevity and market power to, like, fight against them and, like, be an open marketplace for people to sell cards on. Um, like, eBay is the only real competitor they have. And so, like, I don't think T- TCG buys eBay anytime soon. But, like, TCG owning, like, a Rockefeller-esque, like, supply chain of, like, 
every single getting like 19 different fees along the the life cycle of a card is not good for the industry and is not good for stores or players yep i think i come down with you on all of that as well there's just it 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 reeks of um the same sort of corporate (laughs) vertical integration um to use some buzzwords here that we see across other industries where you have now they have the company taste wants. of human flesh. It's like a bear. <laughs> if a bear eats a person, then they're like, "Oh, he's got a taste for human flesh." So work like TCG that. players developing a taste for businesses, and who's next to get <laughs> stuffed into its gaping maw? Well, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's cool that the people who made Delverlands, for instance, the card scanning app that they got purchased by TCG player. I think they went to work there, you know, good for them. Those, those people made a project. That's great. But as it continues, you just see more and more of the integration that you get to people want it to be proprietary. And sooner or later you have the magical selling cards equivalent of removing the headphone jack, changing the charger, you know? So, um, yep. Once, once it feels monopolistic, they no longer, have any incentive not to just put the screws to you and we've I talked not about want the, the screws the fees. put to me yeah, yeah well when we've talked about the fees and how they've changed and or gone up and ways that allow tcg player to double dip we've covered all of that on this podcast and we had a lot of discussions about whether channel fireball entering the marketplace space would be able to make an impact and the answer was tcg player appears to be too big to i don't even know if to fail but it's it appears to be the amazon juggernaut just buying up everything in its wake so there's another comment you can make on this um just sort of over the past 10 years of how easy it is in this this industry specifically i think but also just any industry over the course of the past like 10 20 years of social media of like it's very easy to make yourself as a company look bigger than you actually are um because like channel fireball has been like a historically small company that yes. has made itself look very very big yes. um and TCG player started as a very very small company 10 years ago well like it's been around for longer than that but like 10 years ago they were an extremely small company and like everybody still knew them as a household name for pricing that rivaled star city but like this industry is so small that it's very very easy with like a small amount of marketing and advertising to make yourself like look like this giant juggernaut that is uh, a fail safe and relied upon and channel fireball kind of like ran a skeleton crew for the past five years while still managing to put on that facade and like there's a lot of people that are like holy shit channel of fireball got bought in the channel of fireball exactly. when in real actuality like the number of market like yeah. dollars they had at this point was like very very few especially if you've been paying attention and seeing the signs of their decline but like that, that's just like a comment you can make on this is like it's very easy to like with a small amount of advertising and like a sparkle and glitter to make yourself look like this giant mega co- corporation that like isn't just like this small mm-hmm. tent or like somebody's somebody's like home office yeah no you're absolutely right because um i mean obviously i have some insight here i worked for channel fireball when they were still located in uh santa clara so i saw the channel fireball offices and warehouse at that time and you hear warehouse you think that's huge, you know, tens of thousands of square feet or whatever. Their warehouse was just like a, you know, a big room, <laughs> you know, like it's, I see TCG players warehouse too. It's not as big as you think it is. Um, doesn't mean it's not a lot of cards in there, but the entire channel fireball operation, you know, it consists of X number of offices in a small office space with the warehouse out the back. Yeah, and like that's the entirety that, like, of the channel fireball online operation. Yeah, people think that Star City Games is like some Riot Games level of like college yeah. campus yeah. sprawling across a, a cityscape, but it's they like, own Roanoke. <laughs> no, nah, they're a game store, man. Like <laughs> they're a game mm-hmm. store. They have a pretty big warehouse. Like they have a pretty big warehouse in the back, but like they, yeah. they're not Riot Games. They're not Google. They're not. And in Magic, in particular, um, you know, it seems like these names have been such household names over the years that people don't necessarily equate online presence to what's driving them. You know, for instance, um, something like Card Kingdom has historically poor article content or video content or at least discoverability of that content. Oh my God, look. I'm the content manager on a major website and I didn't know the name of my counterpart at Card Kingdom until they hired a new one. 
<laughs> like yeah. the f- well, with people, I, the only time I saw a, a Card Kingdom article or evidence of one was someone in, had in their bio, I write for Card Kingdom. <laughs> like, I yeah. really hope that changes because Card Kingdom is an excellent place to buy list your cards and, and buy from occasionally. And, you know, we love having Card Kingdom. Basically, they are the industry standard for EDH prices because they've been selling EDH cards as a focus longer than anybody else. But I'm on that website every day and like, I still forget they have articles. So yeah. Well, like, shout out while we're here. Shout out to Jason Crowell, the new content manager. Yeah. At, uh, I'm really excited. I, I'm following Jason on Twitter and I'm like, I'm, I'm just glued to that. I'm waiting for him to make a big push to be like, Hey, we're going to put our articles on the front page or, you know, make them yeah. find he's a, or, or something. He's, he's a good guy with a lot of uh, experience while we're on the topic. I worked with him uh, at upcomer. So he's uh, I'm excited to have him in, in our space, especially in Jay. This is something that impacts Jason and I here. A lot, mm-hmm. given our, that we work very closely with Card Kingdom. Also, the other thing to talk about in this is, is another note on this, is that the three of us, by virtue of our connections in the industry and what we do, we do have a better sense of who is what. So, you know, mm. Card Kingdom, ton of cards, way more cards sold than you would expect based yeah. on what you've seen from their online presence or their Twitter account posting memes. Like, those things are not... <laughs> all that they're cracked up to be it but it's it's not just like the random podcast listeners like oh card kingdom they sell a lot more than i thought like tcg player was surprised how much card kingdom was selling so like you know it's it's not always transparent how big a site is you know exactly exactly so sometimes they're like they're like we're launching a marketplace and but it's troll and toad and then no one notices but like sometimes <laughs> it's someone just been quietly you know, selling way more cards than you'd imagine since 1998. Like it, it, it's a, well, it's and, they're a juggernaut. And, yeah, and 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 interestingly, TCG player. You know, look when I started playing this game in 2008 or so, 15 years ago now. Um, people quoted Star City prices. People didn't quote TCG player prices. They mm. quoted not. It was Star City or bust. At the trade tables, at and people would say Star, Star City's to. got better customer service. But at that time, though, it didn't even, it was like TCG player didn't even have the cachet. And like people, when you would, people would quote you Star City. There were no scanning apps to look anything up. That's I mean, what people would do is Star City prices for me. And it took I mean, over the years, TCG, TCG player, player broke into this came space. out in 2009. Right. That's what I'm like saying. Like as, as Ascension Gaming Co. And then mm-hmm. we branded a TCG player in like the early 2010s. And then. Mm-hmm. And that's what they've just been quietly uh, building. Right. And you don't you may not know this. Right. But TCG player doesn't just sell magic cards, although that comprises the vast majority of their business. But they do Pokemon. They do other games. They sell flesh and blood cards. They sell collectibles to an they extent. also like they, they uh, have big plans that don't stop with well them. well they they claim to want to get into sports cards uh but they still compress photo listings on, on the back end <laughs> and so like <laughs> yeah that, you're no, talking about your technical issues yeah that's incongruent to, to put it nicely like they're like we're gonna be the the leader in the industry of the most the most financially backed, powerful card game market, sports cards. Oh yeah, can you can you like zoom in on a photo? Absolutely not. Don't nope. have the bandwidth for it's it. It's a Wayne Gretzky rookie card. Do you know what Wayne Gretzky looks like? That's what he looks like on the card. <laughs> Buy it. That'll be one point seven million dollars, um, please. Just <laughs> click. Our fees are only twenty four percent. And yeah, and so like on uh, both sides. We are uh, strawmanning our future employers so hard right now. <laughs> and past employers, by well, the way. Well, uh, so if you Google, do, do a fun little Google exercise. Google a card name and then TCG player and then click on the link and you'll expect to be brought to, like, the website page where you can buy the card. But you'll usually get brought to a website page for a single listing with photo of, like, a 20-cent card that has a listing with photo that just breaks my mind, like... Why are you listing your photo, your your card with a photo, my guy? It's a twenty eight cent card. Why are you listing your Lana Ralph with a with a photo from like a Nokia from two thousand four? Like, can you can you not? You're you're taking all the mm-hmm. bandwidth. Yeah. Well, I mean, look. One other serious note to make here uh, is that Channel Fireball was working. I'm not sure if they owned or, but they had a they were working with um, a new card grading company. 
And that's something that I can, you know, again, don't know what, if any impact that has on this deal, but that is something that is now theoretically on the TCG roster is a card grading <clears throat> company. And, how, and it what, like, how big of a deal would that be for them? It just seems like it's a little late to get into card grading, but like mm-hmm. people are responding way too late to a log jam that was like relevant two years ago. Like the bottom is falling out of all that crap, like slabbed Pokemon and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like, it's way too late to be moving into that space. Uh, well, with that. I, yeah, I mean, look, it's just the thing is, it's like, it's, there's just so many levels to it. Like the card grading companies that have existed, have existed for a long time, whether it was trendy or not. Mm. So like a business model exists. Your TCG player, it's just something you get to offer as part of your, subscription services that you sell yeah, all of your vendors like, and blah 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 the, right? yeah the only way you could do it is have tcg players grab it to us because a lot of these fly by night card grading companies are starting to pop mm-hmm. up and people are showing this on reddit and they're like p- putting a card that has the plane walker symbol that says it's a list card as the original set and shit like that like real embarrassing stuff yeah that's that's rough <laughs> um, so like if, if tcg player said hey we have vetted a card grading service it's new but that's the one we're going to go with mm-hmm. y- you need that sort of association because just like just popping up now as a card grader like everyone's yeah. i don't know man well we've just seen a lot of consolidation within the magic industry over and the that's the opposite of what years. we really need i think we need it, options as consumers it doesn't it doesn't feel um unexpected almost though right we had i think certainly a boom period in the 2000 early 2010s right the game was exploding uh patreon got launched whenever patreon got launched like it, there was you know then there was an arena push blah 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 um i don't know you need something to give you to, to keep momentum going I... while the game the game is doing quite fine the the websites we've seen more of the money sometimes funneled you know if it's funneled through arena or magic online um it or a monopolistic to it, it just brings it down. And you're seeing TCG player has for years now been buying up um, different things throughout the industry, as has Channel Fireball, um, as has Wizards, as has EDH Rec. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't forget Wizards. Like, they're a, a big player, too. Like, that's... Getting bought by TCG player is cool, but, like, man, who do you think Spelltable would rather have bought them? Yeah. Go ahead, DJ. Uh, you want to say something? Well, I was going to say this as like a closing remark on the entire subject because we spent like 30 minutes on it. We have. But, uh, my my podcast. homework for everyone, my homework for everyone tonight is to go look up the Pullman company. Did Corbin and I have to do this too? No, you guys don't. You're you're excused. <laughs> Take the SpongeBob. Like I turned, I got turned into a cow. Can I go home? You're excused. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, go look up the Pullman company and then write a 500 page report on it and send it to the <laughs> brainstorm brewery email. 500 the page report. He says 500 pages. Yeah. yeah. Several dissertations. Right. A textbook. <laughs> Did you mean 500 words? 800 is the point bill, font. Is the the is the Pullman company related to the? Bill Pullman Company. Bill Pullman Company. Yeah. Game uh, over, I, man. Game over. Was he did in that I movie? Mean, did I mean 500 words? Yes, but I said what I said and I'm sticking to it. it so it sucks to be you. You respect, gotta respect that double down. I I almost wanted to do the bit where I said, you know Bill Pullman and then named a bunch of movies Bill Paxton was in, but like <laughs> I kind of just didn't want to do that. I thank you for that. But like that would be funny to our listeners and not you two. And that's basically why I didn't do it. Cause you don't know enough about anything to know that people confuse Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton. They was do he, seem similar. Was because he in the Lusitania? Yeah. He was in <laughs> Lusitania too. Otherwise, which one of them was in Twister? I watched that the other day. You would watch Twister. It was on TV and I live in Oklahoma. That's Bill Paxton, right? I don't remember which one was in Twister. <laughs> I don't remember which one was in Sleepless in Seattle. I don't remember which one was in Frailty or Weird Science or Aliens. It was one of those two guys. Spaceballs, it was a Bill P, baby. Bill P out here representing. Those two guys shared a career, and it was beautiful. I know that one. I know I've seen Spaceballs. All right, it's time to move on. It's time to get a little magic because we haven't talked enough magic yet. Uh, It's time for Breaking Bulk. Breaking Bulk time. Breaking Bulk time. Break, break, break. Oh, yeah, Breaking Bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking Bulk. The end. Ooh, let me go first. 
Jason says he wants to go first, so Jason, let's hear it, buddy. So I I thought of a three dollar card um, that I always wondered why it wasn't more, and I decided not to go with it because I think it was a little obvious. But that same set netted me a card with count them seven printings that is still over one dollar and it is an artifact from exodus please tell me this this card that has always been weather light light. yep and mindstone also has way more than seven printings yep this card has exactly seven printings and is has been uncommon every single solitary time if that helps what was the most recent printing uh, that's a lot of information, but I feel like it was uh, Magic 2010. Yeah, 2010, baby. Exodus, the bridge, the first set in Magic history to uh, have a yeah. colored expansion symbol. I should know this. Oh. I'm going to be mad if I don't get this. Uh, there Those are them. there are several very expensive and commons in this set, including Reconnaissance, which is $15. You said it was Price a of Progress, rock? which is 3 I didn't say it was a mana rock. I said it was an artifact that is uncommon. Oh. I see. I didn't say it's not a mana rock. Stop mining me for information, sir. I'm going to be so mad when I don't get this. Over one dollar. Um, Exodus Artifact. Elixir of Immortality. I will tell Whoa, you the what? sets. Just keep Mag- it going. Magic 2010, The List, Exodus, 10th edition, 7th edition, 9th edition, 8th oh, edition. Oh, Spellbook. Spellbook, baby! Yeah, the... These are the... a damn dollar, despite it being printed so much. And it, I don't know, does it impact the board? Kinda. It's cool to have a, no maximum hand size for zero mana. Zero mana artifacts are always cool. Uh, Exodus cards are always cool, baby. Soul Warden's over a buck. You know? This is a cards with card lots casual. of printings from this set. This is a 60 card casual card. Yeah. Um, it is I a almost... card that... So I have a theory, and that's that like, cards that break rules are very powerful and, and popular in 60-card formats, where like any time yeah. a player plays a game and like is suddenly confronted by a rule, they want to find out if there's a card They're that like that They're like Neo rule. in the Matrix. They're like, whoa, I know Kung Fu because I played Zero Mana. Whoa. I don't have a maximum hand size, Morpheus. And he's like, I'm not coming back for the weird fourth one. You can just recast me with a different actor and just like write a line of dialogue explaining it. And then Neo's <laughs> like, whoa, that sounds lame. Is anyone going to watch this? And they're like, no, nah, the whole movie's about how they basically just had to make a sequel so they didn't lose the rights to it. And like they didn't care if it was good or not. And he's like, whoa, am I going to be in this? They're like, yeah, Carry On Moss 2 is going to be in it for some reason. Bro, but that like, movie nobody was else. fine. That movie was fine. Was fine? Yes. It was fine? It was fine. I bet you thought Matrix Revolutions was fine, too. I bet you like Speed Racer. I bet you watched Cloud Atlas. I bet you were just a fanboy. I did watch Cloud Cloud Atlas. And that is the true, true, baby. You can't be objective here. You were just a fanboy. I bet you struggle to open doors. Uh, I use my mind. There is no door. You just have to remember there is no door. So anyway, I'm going to open this door for no reason. Please, DJ. Go ahead. Like... I think people will find out cards uh, through their own just sort of um, investigative, like googling or just searching or whatever. Like anytime they want to break yeah. a, like anytime they want to break a rule, like uh, hand size is a rule. So they they like, man, this one time I I have this powerful card in my deck that draws thirteen cards, but like I didn't want to have to discard them. That's lame. And then they're like, oh, spell book, a reliquary tower, great. Or yeah. like, uh, like Upwelling is another great example where it's this like this weird card from Scourge that telepathy. Telepathy is so, another good one. Like just cards that let you do things that they just have one line of text that says like this rule doesn't apply, and then like new players gravitate towards that. But don't pretend you didn't love that shit when you were twelve. Don't pretend. And here's the thing, though, you don't have to pay money for that. You just cheat, and then none of the rules apply to you. Yeah, at my kitchen table, everybody plays with their hand face up. Everyone just cheats and then... Do you, do you remember the rules that you came to get a satisfying game of Magic in like the seven minutes you had before school started in the cafeteria? So we were like, all right, all all mana down, drop to seven every turn. <laughs> I did not get a ton of like home school, you know, like homebrew Magic formats. No. Because like I basically just started... 
went to a store and started drafting. But uh, we had uh, we had like the highest ready. highest life point wins in Yu Gi Oh at the end of the lunch period. That was what we did. Well, that's what they did at the uh, 1996 Magic World. So, like yeah. the the meat grinders to get into the to, to qualify for worlds, people were literally like paying twenty five dollars for spike feeder because everyone's like, "Oh my god, everyone's playing a stupid burn deck. If we just gain life with spike feeder, we will I have believe the it. most life at the end of the meat grinder." And, and yeah, like, for those for win. those of you who don't know, uh, sudden death and magic is a thing. I actually top aided. Um, or maybe I didn't top eight. There was an SCG open. Uh, I don't remember if it was one I top eight or not. But players went to time in the top eight because the top eight yeah. was not untimed. And a, they had to go to game three with no time left. If somebody was playing Stoneblade and game two took the forever. The first or life total change. First if life you, total change. If you yep. lost a life, you lost. If you gained a life, you won. Amazing. Yep. Because the way sudden death works is... When you get to sudden death in magic, right? Say that happens at the end of your five turns or whatever. It's the first person. It's It goes down to a life total tiebreaker, essentially. Your last tiebreaker is your life total. And if you have the same life total, then it's that. And if you are going to game three, then that makes a fetch land pretty bad. And it makes a goblin lackey pretty good. So I watched the player mulligan down to two and then concede because they did not have a swords to plowshares and a basic planes or I'm sorry, swords is in and out because that would give the goblins player a life, putting them to 21, winning them the game. So their deck just couldn't. They just couldn't. Yeah, couldn't deal just, with I've a heard, turn one uh, lackey. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard many a story around the, the the draft table about like old boomer players who lost games by like pitching like by pitching force of will and like countering cards that wouldn't have mattered because you've been losing life. life. To, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sudden death rules. Uh, pretty wild, pretty wild. But all right, back to that's not even breaking. like an ancient thing. Like scars of Mirrodin. No, that's just ten years. A ago, GP. Yeah. I was, I was doing that. Like I, I had to complete. I went through my sideboard for all the shit that was completely useless, and it's like when you play this artifact, gain a life. I was playing shit like that. I mean, that makes I took, in, like real fact, cards like, out of my deck. In fact, like becomes really bad there, right? It's like oh. <laughs> I, you have, my, you my have nine poison elf. counters, but you shocked me, and I. Unfortunately, uh, Infect will not be a deck that goes to time and have to play sudden death. Yep, yeah, win or lose, <laughs> win or lose, you uh, you can drive somewhere for dinner if you're playing Infect for sure. <laughs> for the most part, yeah. Um, All right, uh, moving on. Uh, breaking bulk. Go I ahead. have a Dragons of Tarkir red card. Card. It's an instant. Is it a card with a rarity on it? Yeah. It, it's either a common, uncommon, rare, or mythic. It's not a mythic. Is it a rare, DJ? You said what set? Cons of Tarkir? It's, no, it's a Dragons of Tarkir red instant. Is it the one that searches for a dragon? No. That is Dark Sarkin's Triumph. Triumph. That's a good guess, but no. Yeah. See, I tell when you give good guesses, I, I give you the feedback. Hey, I, how many times has it been printed? Uh, that I will look up for you. Is it more than one? You would tell me the it, Stoke JJ, the flames. JJ, no, JJ can stoke uh, the flames. It has like, no reprints. Okay, so JJ just cut. How many times have it been printed? Okay, it has, so it's not Impact Tremors or the ten dollar Dragon Uncommon, right? This card has no reprints, and it's not Stoke the Flames either. Correct. And it's not this is mythic. one I would think Corbin would get, and. Because it's a red instant in how much Dragons of Tarkir. That's correct. a dollar. How much does it cost? Is it money wise or Yeah. Uh it is two to three dollars. It's an instant? It's around three dollars, yep. What? It's not impact tremors, because that's not an instant. Oh my goodness. Yeah, uh TCG low on this is two ninety two. Oh, is it the um is it the Dragon Speaker Shaman card? No. That is uh a common creature. Mm-hmm. Alright. Uh it is Rending Volley. That's still worth money, interesting. Rending Volley is three dollars. It is one minute that gets, instant. What does that get played in? I that's why I thought Corbin would get it. I assumed it was like a modern or, or uh, I mean, pioneer it, thing. It it, it the answer, DJ, here is going to be Pioneer, I think. Yeah, because okay. this is a, I'm looking at it now. This is a, a pretty recent spike, which means it's definitely a Pioneer. Well, there was a there was a card 
called no it wasn't fry it was in fry, like fry, fry is not even combust it's even, is the it's, other even one. it's way older than fry it's com- it's combust dj parch? jason jason it is combust no parch I think. parch is even older okay yeah That's like way older that like yeah it was only whiter boat creatures yeah, so Rending Volley is one mana instant. Cannot be countered by spells or abilities. Deals four damage to a blue or white creature. I mean, you kill spirits with it. Presumably, you kill... Uh... You kill Deceiver Exarch. That's what this was. There was a while where this was heavily played in Modern. Yeah. Um, it, literally, this card was printed into Modern because Combust existed at two mana. Did the same thing. For five, for five damage, damage, I think. damage yeah, yeah. And they realized that that's not the issue. The issue yeah. is the mana... So they printed Rending Volley specifically as a twin answer. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was surprised that this doesn't have any reprints. It's not a Mystery Booster card. It's, I mean, clearly it's not a Commander card, but like no, no Double Masters, no Modern Masters, no nothing. It is just Dragons of Tarkir, which is Hang on. several years ago. And it's $3, so like... Yeah, this is a great one, DJ, because uh, this it's is in, a card It's that... in 200 EDH decks on EDH. <laughs> Uh, this two, is a card 223. That if you if you even if you got bulk picked by me last year, it's gonna have rending volleys in it. You know, when we talk about repicking your bulk or things like that, I mean this card in 2021 was was nine cents. Um yes. this, this yeah. was in my bulk for sure. I used to pull this card five years ago because it was it was it was almost a dollar and it mm-hmm. was, you know, quarter buy list or whatever. And it's one of those cards that was it's just been dead 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 so when dj brought it up i was like wait a minute that exists again um but it makes perfect sense with pioneer which is a lot of pioneers on pioneer probably represents the best you know non-commander opportunities right now because the format's just finding itself and this rending volley spike for instance has happened in the past anything you know, good from month. dragons has like five printings though it's crazy most stuff does yeah because it's just such a casual set to like just pull from yeah or it's something yeah. like Good Old Lurker that like you were just throwing in the trash five years <laughs> That's ago. A good one, yeah. All right, I'll finish it off. I have a a multicolor card from Streets of New Capenna. It's an uncommon. Get the f- out of here. It, which charm is it? I don't think the charms are worth anything actually in this set. Uh, oh well, I guess I was looking at the like the fancy ones. Like the uh, I I don't know. I bought a I I bought collections. With new Capenna, I didn't buy any new Capenna because, like, I'm really sick of them making me pay thousands of dollars for collector boosters that are just with worthless foils in them. Uh, I bought a collector booster last week for the first time. They do have worthless foils in them. Because foils suck. Their foils are pringly. Like I opened a... I did a double master draft. I opened a Cavern of Souls in the draft. I got a uh, so collector it's fucked that their foils are fun. so bad people perf- like foils well, are cheaper than non-foils I got none license uh, hers so like I'm gonna have to guess based on like what the card does and not by the name right so like th- it's gotta be an uncommon multicolor card I'm, is I'm it one gonna, of like, is it one of the lieutenants that are uncommon I don't think there are lieutenants. is it one of the charms there, there's like there were 70 cycles of multiplayer cards in this set. Just tell us which cycle it is. Well, no, we'll just, like, I don't think it'd be a cycle because none of the, I don't think any of the cycles are good in this set. So like, it's gotta be like a staple effect, like either a card draw or a burn spell. I'm going to say like, it's, it's like some like just standard uncommon card draw spell. That's my first guess. What's the rarity? You never told us the rarity. He said uncommon. I think he said, I think he said, you uncommon. only told us the rarity once. So it's not it's not a charm. It is not a charm. And it's not cuz like you you previously picked how like many go colors blank. is it? how many just tell us how many colors. Is it 3 or 1 or 2? Well, not it's 1. It's the it? only multicolor non-rare worth money. You well you said is like Is it the is it the draw card? <laughs> the blue black thing. That's what I said. Okay, well, uh, you know what? It, that's I, said card as close. Dra- I said standard I card know. drawn copy. Clearly as close as you all are going to get is you coming up with that and Jason it's, adding blue black. It's a thing with the, the, the green martini. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's tainted indulgence. It's a dollar. Uh, draw t- Blue black instant draw two cards and discard a card unless there are five or more mana values among cards in your graveyards. 
See, I know, I know Green Martini because I bought a collection this week. It is, we it is a it. Green Martini. You're right. We did it. Yeah, and like I, I just was logic, logicing it because like you got there. Previously, yeah. You previously picked Go Blank from Strixhaven, so I'm like, okay, what are just standard, uncommon, worthless effects that are like actually playable? <laughs> Bro, it's like Go the Blank's discard good in card, format. the burn spell, the card draw <laughs> yep. spell, like. <laughs> yup. <laughs> That's how it goes. And of course, we all of these together. come from all of these come from our sponsor, MTGStocks.com, where you should go check out the premium offerings on the website. You should go check out the interests every day. It is where we get all of our picks, all of our breakings, bulk, everything that contributes to making this the most um, up to date financial podcast on the internet for you. This thanks to MTG Stocks, so go check it out. That's our generous sponsor. We would appreciate it. We're not a finance podcast. Yeah, you know, finance lifestyle. All right, moving on, though. We, we spent a lot of time. We went deep on TCG Player Channel Fireball. So before we get out of here this week, uh, we're going to hit you up with one more segment. I hope you liked it last week. And we've had a couple requests uh, for segments. So before we go, we have one more segment tonight. But I'm going to let you all know a couple that did not make the cut. So these are segment suggestions that I've had made to me. And we can let our listeners who go to patreon.com slash BSB and join our Discord for $1 a month can tell us what they want to hear about here. Uh, or you can send an email to brainstormbrew at gmail.com. But here are some segment ideas. If you didn't get enough segments last week, let us know which one of these you want to hear. First up is peak to peak. Look at the cards with the most gains this week by format. Next up is the dump truck. Using the spreadsheet, what previous picks do you think should be sold? Next up is Hot or Not. Looking at hot cards on EDA Trek and vote whether they're worth picking up. And the they're, final segment... Their names are strong so far. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. They have yep, good segment like, names. You'll like the final one for sure. It's called Cancel Corbin. Bit where Corbin's mic gets cut and everyone just rails against Corbin for being from Oklahoma and for using words like Oklahomies. Nope, that's uh, that's an after hour segment. That's, that's what sure. I got. I don't even know where those suggestions came from, but they're in my notes. So somebody out there uh, had these suggestions that that's I don't an after think hour it was segment. me. So for if sure. you want to hear any of those, we do that every except time. for the cancel Corbin one, that one is canceled. Uh, let us know. Brain some bridge. Oh, I muted him. Oh, excellent. Yeah, good. Let's reel in Corbin. You guys wouldn't muted. Want to do that that bit anyway, right? <laughs> he's look at him. He's still moving his mouth. He doesn't know he's muted. <laughs> right. You know, guys. Hey, Corbin, why don't guys, you write something on your dry erase board? Yeah, and I, I definitely for a him. year. I, I definitely. Oh, he's deaf too. To, oh, yeah. he can't hear us. Like, oh, that's so good. Oh, he has no idea. <laughs> you wouldn't like server mute me and continue talking. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You wouldn't do that, right? That was a good seg. Oh shit! Is that popcorn? Hey, popcorn, come here, bud. I got a I new cat, figure, and I yeah, want people be, to see good. Let's wrap how this my up, new please. cat looks identical to my old cat. Hey, speaking of my cats, uh, I was sent this beer by my buddy Wally D from the Triptych Brewing Company in Savoy, Illinois. And most of the beer Wally D sent me, not stellar. This is one of the best double APAs I've ever had. And even though I get a headache when I drink beer on this medication... I drank this whole beer tonight because it's super good. Check out uh, the double IPA Fly You Fools from the Savoy, Illinois Brewing Company, Trip Ditch Brewing, which sounds really cool. Sounds like old D&D, which is what Wally D is into. Check out Wally DM on YouTube. He he sent me like 10 beers. Am I going to shout him out 10 times? Maybe not, but I'll shout him out twice. Thanks, Wally. Now, you've been a good friend of the cast and you were a good former EDH rec writer. Good luck with your DMing, and thank you so much for sending me uh, seven bad beers and three good ones. Appreciate it, bud. <laughs> Prost. Nice. Good enough. <laughs> All right, so it's Jason Downs' beer. Let's wrap up this week. Oh, Let's... the reason I brought that up was because I want more people to send me beer. Hey, hit me up. Ask for send, my address. Send Jason a beer. Send me beer. I will, I will shout out you, your project, whatever you'd like me to, within reason. <laughs> if you send me one beer, like, hey, here's an IPA, shout out ISIS. I'm not going to do that. But, like, <laughs> if yeah, you have a YouTube two, two channel. Two or three beers for that minimum. <laughs> right? This beer is called Death to America, and it's written on there in Sharpie, and it appears to be a vial of ricin. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will shout out your project or, uh, you know, your YouTube channel, Wally DM. I'll, I'll do all that for the price of one beer, which is just, it's insane. 
It's it's the I I can't believe like Amazon isn't sending me one beer to shout out Amazon Prime. <laughs> shout and they you know they're listening. I have right. You know Amazon is listening to everything I say. Cuz you so have like, Alexa in the room. Yeah, you would yeah. think that they would get in on the the cheapest advertising. You hear that advertising. Bezos? Get in on that and also get in on these picks of the week we got coming up. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Time for the pick of the week. You could have your message broadcast to millions of listeners a decade if you just give us your money, right? Millions a decade. That's a lot. Millions a decade. People. You're right. That if when you put it that way though, Jason, it is a lot. If we sound like the most successful. How many podcast listeners? Oh. Millions. millions a decade. I mean, the, it's most the same impressive... thousand idiots, you know, 36,500 the... times, but the most impressive part of that is that we've been around for a decade, not the fact that it's a million number, right? Like it's <laughs> all those episode. What, what episode 520 make it a decade? Something like that. But there's the extra, you know, and then but we have thing, asterisks you know, to that. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to tell you something else that isn't a lot right now. That's Mnemonic Deluge. It's two to three dollars. I know I've talked about this card before. Um, it is finally starting to move. It's from Commander Legends. It has climbed from uh, two to three in the past uh, couple weeks. Um, this is a card that I definitely know we talked about when it was uh, under two before, and uh, it's moving now. So Mnemonic Deluge is this crazy nine mana broken blue spell, but it's a mythic from Commander Legends, uh, and it's starting to move. So I like that in at three bucks. Very cool. Very cool. Hey, uh, nobody ever knows how much Forbidden Orchard costs, but Forbidden Orchard has a tendency to approach $30 before it's reprinted. I think as infrequently as Forbidden Orchard is reprinted because, I don't know, there's not a ton of like pressure on them to reprint it a ton. Uh, Forbidden Orchard just goes from like $30 to 10 then back up to 30 over like a three year period. It was just reprinted in Double Masters. When Double Masters cards hit the bottom, which is I don't know. Go listen to an MTG Finance podcast. They'll tell you <laughs> when the best time to buy Double Masters is. A month all I month. know all I know is that Forbidden Orchard has repeatedly cycled between 30 and $10 just on a reprint and then not a reprint cycle. Is Vintage doing that? I doubt it. Are people playing this card in Legacy? No, I'm pretty sure this is an EDH card. It's in 40,000 EDH decks. That's a it's lot. A That's about as many as Crucible of Worlds. Get your Forbidden Orchards now. It's a rare. It is a non-mythic rare in a set where people are opening two rares per pack. Get your Forbidden Orchards when it hits like, I don't know, five bucks probably. Yeah, that card's, five bucks. that card's going to get cheap, I think, like four or five. And then it'll be 20 in two years. And we're like, what the <coughs> fuck did that happen? Well, it's I'm certain, warning you now. Yeah. Buy at the floor. It, it hit 30 twice. You think it can't hit 20? Yeah. Don't f*** this up. <laughs> All right, DJ, finish it out. I'm very confident about my pick this week, even though it is a constructed staple. And that is because I was at the SCG Syracuse this past weekend where there was a big modern and legacy tournament. And uh, I was I was converted to this card, even though I haven't played a match of constructed magic in several years. Uh, this is a rare from Streets of New Capenna that has been 20, 30 cents market price for a couple months ago. And uh, it, it's slowly creeping up. It's it's fifty eight cents market price now, up doubled from the the previous quarter. Uh, this is extraction specialist. It is Ooh. a because I had to have it read to me too when I when somebody was uh, no no I I've, its phrases. I've always liked this card. Yeah, it is a three mana three two life link. Uh, same stats as Luris, so that's that's good. Um, <laughs> when extraction right. specialist enter, specialist enters the battlefield, return a creature with. Mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. More Luris parallels. That creature can't attack or block for as long as you control Extraction Specialist. This thing brings back Devoted Druids. It brings back Mothers of Rune. It brings back many, many different utility creatures. And just there's there's really no downside. You can Aether Vial it in. It's very, very flexible. Um, And one reason that I am very confident in this card is when you go to the TCG player page for it, uh, if you filter, if you clear all your filters, the cheapest copy is like 30 cents. Okay, that doesn't seem great. But if you add the filters, if you add those those filters, the big one is the direct filter. So the direct filter, the cheapest copy, 
Now that's like 75 cents. That's that's more relevant. Then if you go to the quantity four or more, that is a very big filter that I don't think we talk yeah. about enough. Um, yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. of the time you can judge the price of a card, especially for a constructed card, by its playset price, not by its individual price. Because if a, a person has one copy, they're like, oh, I want to be the cheapest. Right. So they will undersell. They they will try to be the cheapest, but a person with a playset, they will try to be the cheapest playset. Yes, uh, and people buy cards in playsets clearly. So like, for constructed cards like this, not like Crucible of yeah. Worlds or whatever, mm-hmm. not like the EDH cards, you want to judge by the price of a playset. And right now, there are so many copies of this card listed for a dollar by direct sellers who have a playset. So yeah. I'm a big fan of buying into this card for 50 cents when you can, 50 cents to a dollar. And I expect to be paying a dollar buy list on this card before like the end of the year. Like I, this seems like a card that is just playable enough in multiple formats. It has very high utility. It scales the more cards get printed and the better, the, like this card also just gets better, the better lightning bolt is in any given format. Like clearly the lifelink is a big part of why this is relevant right now. Um, But like, Renegade Rally is a very, very powerful mechanic, um, mm-hmm. and so is Luris, and just these these utility dudes that just give you redundancy. Like, if you play your two-drop combo engine, and then they kill it, and then you're like, this guy, bring it back, I'm still gonna kill you. Um, th- this card's very powerful, I think, and I, I didn't even know it existed before this weekend, but I was turned on to it very quickly by several legacy specialists. Yeah, it definitely seems like a cord target in these kind of decks. Um, fills an eternal witness kind of vibe in a lot of them. Well, like um, my friend was solid. playing it in like legacy death and taxes with Yorian. <laughs> also pretty good there as most like, things y- are. You, you just flicker it and yeah, yeah, yeah. then, then bad things happen for your opponent. So like, yeah. it just seems very flexible and very versatile. Like it's only one white mana. You, it's splashable. There's so much going on here that I, I, again, I never read the card before this. There you go. That's a good one. All right. Everybody, well, thank you for being here with us. And this is it's a big time for the magic industry. TCG play, player buying Channel Fireball. I mean, look, these are once a decade type occurrences in terms of at least, um, you know, up to this point. You don't see stuff like this very often. Um, and it's going to certainly have a big impact on how things work going forward. And we don't know, like we touched on at the beginning, there's a lot of open questions. But it's going to be interesting. And as always... We'll follow him here on Brainstorm Brewery. Uh, We'll figure it out along with you. Thank you, everybody, for watching on YouTube, for listening wherever you find your podcasts. We'll see you next week. Not on our website, though. Right? I think it's good. Sometimes on our website. Sometimes on our website.